All right, so then Pilates concepts. So these are the things I feel like we need to note in order to have a good discussion about what Pilates is. Um, so we have uh, articulation, of the, I've listed them all out, I won't read them back at you, but there's 11 of them here. So articulation of the spine, um, it's usually a rolling motion, right, where you're moving one vertebra at a time, uh, up or down the spine. Um, so it could be a coccyx curl or a pelvic tilt, and it could be a roll, full roll up or roll down. It could be on all fours, right? Anytime the spine is moving, you can articulate it. Um, the idea of it should be that you're consciously moving through the spine, that you're aware of each level, that you're moving in an exact way, and that you're controlled throughout the movement. So you'll see that there's usually a segment of most people's spine that they don't articulate as well. Um, so that a lot of times has to do with strength, sometimes has to do with a flexibility issue. So we'll, we'll address those two. Um, and then it allows the deep musculature to work instead of your rectus abdominis if you're constantly pulling in, yeah. So the articulation would be going both directions? Both directions. And then flexion, how would you compare that? Flexion is a full flexed motion, but yeah, if you're rounding, so you can articulate the spine in flexion or in extension. extension. Okay. Right, so flexion would be rounding, extension would be opening. Mm -hmm. So the low, yeah. Um, so that's a very good question. Mm -hmm. So um, I always, give you a word of caution when you're talking to somebody about articulating their spine. It's going to look different on different people. And some people, spines won't go. And you don't want to force it ever. You just want to teach them length and control. So even if they can't place that one vertebra on the floor, it's not your job to make them do it. It's your job to make sure they can control the movement through that level. So when we do the exercises, we'll watch everybody else do them mm -hmm. so you can see how different we all are. Mm -hmm. And then you'll, I think you'll get a really good understanding of that. But I've had people get hurt because the instru their instructor has insisted that mm. they must articulate at a particular level when their body just wasn't going to do that. Okay. So, and in the spine especially, we want to be careful with that. Um, okay, so then overload is basically, you've seen it, I know you've all seen it, is when somebody's tightening their deep abdominals and their neck yeah. and shoulders go up, or their rib cage flares, or their... Yeah. Right, so it's okay. about tension in places that there shouldn't be because they're helping mm -hmm. do the exercise. Yep, right? yeah. So we'll watch you overload and we'll watch each other overload. Yep. You'll watch me overload and we'll fix it also. Okay. And so that's something to watch. Um, tabletop position, I put it in there just so we're all aware. It's a 90-90 position laying down. Um, it is a great starting place for most of our exercises. Ideally you can lay there in neutral spine but somebody who's really weak cannot even hold that in neutral spine without strain. Yeah. So the neutral spine in tabletop is a little smaller than the neutral spine arch in when your feet are down. Oh yeah. Mm. Naturally, but it is still a, you can still have a neutral spine position there if you can hold it. So that's tabletop. Um, abdominal scoop, and we'll try this out too. Is just hollowing that low belly and being able to scoop it. So I put a couple pictures there. You can do it supine. You can do it prone. And you can do it in a C curve. And again, we're going to go through all of these. So, um, hollow, hollow, hollow. Yes, that's okay. it. Yes. Okay. It's in, pulled in, <coughs> gooped, beach ball pressed in there. Well, I'll give you so many different ways to cue that that you will be sick of hearing about scooping. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then torso stability is um, basically being able to control. So your legs make a very long lever. Your arms can also make a lever. So here's your yeah. physics lesson for the day, right? So if you want to hold stable, you have to be able to support the weight of your legs and your arms when they're moving away from your midline. So we want to see that you can hold stable. It's easier to hold stable when you're close in, like tabletop position, yeah. or with your legs mm -hmm. straight up. It's get, your levers get longer mm -hmm. as you move away from your midline, so the work gets harder. So I gave you a picture of like a proper torso stability with the back pressed into the floor. Improper would be losing that control as the back arching off the mat. And two things would happen in that picture below. My hip flexors would be firing, my back extensors would then be firing, um, and my rectus abdominis would be pooching way out and trying to fire. So the reason we don't use rectus abdominis is because it's too far away from your spine to give your spinal support or postural support. 
rectus abdominis has two functions. It flexes you up from a laying down position and it brings, helps bring your legs up towards your chest, but it doesn't do much else than that. And it's so far up in front um, mm -hmm. that it doesn't support you posturally. And we don't want it poofing out. No, because, because then it means it's firing. And if and rectus will, fires, right. nobody else does. And the abdominals. It's big, right? it's big and strong. And we don't want to also walk away with it like that. Right? No. We don't want to train it to poof out. No, we don't. We just don't want to train it to you to work. Most okay. people have an overworked rectus abdominis, and mm -hmm. there's a bunch of other overworked muscles you'll hear me ranting about <laughs> that I want to cut them away and get rid of them <laughs> once we get through the anatomy. But um, the, those are. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> yeah, like, we don't need those muscles. Well, actually, we, there's proof that we don't need rectus abdominis. I'll give it to you later. But. Mm. In this top picture on the torso, mm -hmm. is that uh, neutral spine? It looks That's pretty more flat. flat. That's yeah. pretty flat. Okay. 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 So okay. whenever, I usually teach people, when your legs go into full extension, your okay. back should be flattening. Mm -hmm. okay. 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 So in tabletop, you could hold neutral, but in ex legs, legs extended position, 99% of people Hard. cannot support that in neutral. So we have to flat back. Okay. Yeah. And then you're protected like that. Yes, you're protecting your spine that way. Mm -hmm. And you're strengthening. You're strengthening your abdominals. I mean, it's a lot of work to keep that flat mm -hmm. back. Mm -hmm. So you're strengthening and you're protecting your spine. But it's not a. It's not a train for your posture exercise. It's a train for the strength of the postural muscles exercise. Right? Oh, yeah, okay. Okay. Um, and then, so then we talk about neutral spine position. So. Neutral spine, I usually tell people, neutral spine position is a position that when you lay down with your legs in hook line, right, so that bent knee position, that is the position that you land in, that is your neutral spine. Mm -hmm. So that's why I said it's going to look different on every person. When they're relaxed and in that position, that is their neutral spine. So that is the position you want to treat them to support. Right? Not try and say, well, you don't look like you have very much arch. Maybe you should arch more. Mm. Because then they're never going to support that. And it's not their natural neutral spine. You've just put them in extension. Okay. Right? And that's not where we want them to strengthen. Right? So um, if somebody is really weak, you may have to give them support in the neutral spine by putting a towel underneath them. But we'll talk about that too later on. Um, flat back positioning basically means that you have pulled your tummy in enough that your low back has flattened onto the mat, right? And hopefully it's not by totally tucking your bottom that you're doing it, hopefully it's by pulling in your abdominals. Um, mm -hmm. And then the nice thing about flat back positioning is that it gives people feedback on the mat below them. So when you're in flat back, it's easy to know if your back lifts off. Sometimes when people are in neutral, they don't even realize that they're arching more than they're neutral when they go beyond. Mm -hmm. So you'll get to feel that too. I'll make you all try. Um, neutral pelvis is not the same as neutral spine. Neutral pelvis is pubic bone um, and your ASIS is right in a flat triangle. So I'll lay you down, we'll do that today. But um, so that is this flat triangle at your pelvis. So your spine may or may not be in neutral when your pelvis is neutral, and that's anatomy related. People with big butts are not going to be neutral in their spine, they're going to be extended. People with no butt are going to be a little bit flat. Um, that is the body build. So, okay. And people with kind of neither mid, mid size will probably be neutral. Um, so we'll, we'll look at everybody else here. Andrea, when Andrea was in the class, we joked about her big butt. <laughs> this is Sarah's Pilates teacher. Um, we joked about her big butt. She has a nice round, beautiful yeah. round butt. Mm -hmm. But she could not do neutral pelvis and neutral mm -hmm. spine at the same time. <laughs> there was no way. Um, so then, neck positioning, um, I've given you a bunch of different pictures of neck positioning. The main thing with the neck, and, you, and I will cue it over and over, is that the back of the neck needs to stay long. You don't want the mm -hmm. chin jutting forward, which is where we tend to be in our computers and driving, and mm -hmm. you don't want somebody to exercise there, right? You don't want them to strain coming upward for an upper ab curl. So we will teach you and you teach them how to keep a small space between the chin and the chest, usually if they're rolling up, and that keeps the spine in its normal curving. But, and then it's really important to always imagine that the neck is a continuation of your spine, right? So if your thoracic spine is curving, your head should be curving at the same rate, 
right? If your thoracic spine is extending, your head should be extending at the same rate, not flip top head and then thoracic spine, mm -hmm. right? So we've given a bunch of um, examples. I put Tiziano there. He laughed when he saw that. He's like, oh, he would be the poor <laughs> neck position. <laughs> <laughs> and then the rest of them are me showing you what happened to your right. <laughs> like, you didn't tell me. That's hilarious. <laughs> Poor guy. <laughs> the thoracic shelf um, is the area across the shoulder blades and upper back. We always, whenever we are lifting up and putting weight somewhere in the up, it's never supposed to be your neck. Right? It should always be your thoracic shelf. And that is easy when it's something simple, like a little bridge. It's really hard when we're talking about rollovers and jackknives and right. things like that. And Pilates, in his book, is on his neck mm -hmm. a lot of the time. But I don't want to teach you that way. I'll show you for the classical work, but I, but I do not want you practicing that way. And then spinal loading. So, of course, because of the rehab background, I'm really a stickler for make sh making sure that you really understand what spinal loading means. Um, there are different, and, and I've actually put in here, we'll get to them, contraindications for different diagnoses, just so that you have a reference for that. But, um, so I've given you sort of um, the extremely loaded positions and, and flexion in the spine that isn't actually really loaded. So we, you can still do flexion in the spine if that's contraindicated for somebody, if it's in an unloaded way, if loading mm -hmm. is contraindicated. Right? If flexion is contraindicated, you can't flex. But um, if loaded flexion is contraindicated, you can still flex the spine. So the guidelines, um, so I have a picture here, extremely loaded, right, would be seated flexion, rolling like a ball. I put in there because people forget that that's actually a loaded spinal position. Mm -hmm. um, forward bending is very loaded mm -hmm. um, and then roll over so when the butt's coming over the head that is also loaded spinal flexion yeah okay mm -hmm. so the most loaded is the seated um, and then I think it would be something like the roll over and then the forward bending um, okay. so this but seated loading so here just for your yeah. take home for today whenever you slouch you are really loading your spine Whenever you slouch is that what you said slouch yeah, yeah. that starts like to that. load my mm -hmm. yes uh -huh. So, mm -hmm. so okay. it gives you some food for thought about your own body. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the extreme loading. And then um, this I put in quotes, kind of unloaded flexion. So coccyx curl, um, child's pose, low bridge roll up, cat. So things where you're on all fours are great. Even for people with um, contraindicated loaded flexion, um, child's pose, Things where in the coccyx curl and bridge does not really load. Uh, so those are all fine for people who have that, have a disc problem or something that kind of